find. Number 13 is a composite function problem. It says uh, let f of x equal x minus 2 and g of x equal 3 minus x and h of x equal 5x plus 1. And it asks us to find the value g of h of f of 1. So what we really have to do with any kind of function, if it's giving you a definition, an equation, it's just plugging in the values. So we have the value 1. We want to find f of 1. Once we get that value, we'll plug it into h, find f, h of whatever that is, g of whatever that is, kind of work our way from the inside out. We always work from the inside out when we're dealing with parentheses inside other parentheses. So let's start with f of 1. If f of x is x minus 2, then f of 1 is 1 minus 2. We're just plugging that value in. So it's 1 minus 2, and that is negative 1. The problem then becomes g of h of negative 1. We've, we found f of 1, and we're now plugging that value in uh, to h. So h of negative 1 is, we plug the value of negative 1 in here, so we get 5 times negative 1 plus 1. Uh, gives you negative 4. The problem then becomes we find g of negative 4. So we take the function g, we plug in negative 4, we get 3 minus negative 4. Since it's 3 minus x, x is negative 4. Um, that's actually 3 plus 4, which is 7. E. <clears throat> All right, number 14. Number 14, I like this problem because at first, it kind of stumped me. I didn't really know what to do at first. It's really a rational expression problem, and I was trying to make it a binomial problem because we have a binomial expression here divided by this binomial expression. So I was thinking about multiplying by 1 over 1 plus 1 over x, and that didn't really get me anywhere. Uh, then I kind of went back and looked at the problem a little bit closer, and I found out it was actually quite simple. But it takes some thinking. What we're going to do is we're going to put all of this as a, a co in a common denominator. So we need 1 minus 1 over x squared on one denominator. The thing about 1 is it's anything over itself. Anything over itself is 1. So if we did x squared over x squared, that would evaluate to 1. And we're doing minus 1 over x squared. Um, and you're, you're probably thinking, well, yeah, that's true, but why would we want to do that? Well, the reason I chose x squared over x squared to replace 1 with is because now we have a common denominator amongst these two fractions. So we can then express them as the numerators, x squared minus 1, over the common denominator, which is x squared. Now, we can do a similar thing over here to this binomial, basically, uh, we're basically get, getting rid of the binomial. We're, we're combining these two terms so that we can express them all as one large fraction. So again, 1 can be expressed as x over x. And I chose that because we want a common denominator. We're adding this to 1 over x. And again, we can put the numerators together, x plus 1. Put the denominator, the common denominator in the bottom. So let me make this parenthesis larger. So the problem reduces then to evaluate x squared minus 1 over x squared. And it says divided by this term here in red. So what we really want to do is we want to take the reciprocal of that fraction and then we can multiply. So we're multiplying by the reciprocal, which is x over x plus 1. And when it says something like simplify, what we want to do is factor out anything that can be factored and then see what factors cancel from there. Multiplying two fractions is simply, we can basically interpret it as it's just a humongous fraction bar since we're multiplying this x times this, so we're multiplying x squared here, so everything is, everything is really just one large fraction. Um, let's go ahead and factor. x squared minus 1 is a difference of two squares. So that's x plus 1 times x minus 1 over x squared. Oh, we still have an x here in the numerator, sorry. So 
And then we have this term, uh, x plus 1, being multiplied. Put it in parentheses to say that it's being multiplied. Um, let's see what cancels out. So x plus 1 is in the numerator, x plus 1 is in the denominator. So they are gone. They have canceled each other out. We have an x in the numerator that we can get rid of because we have x squared in the denominator. So this squared it reduces to a 1 then. I put a 1 here. We don't need to write the 1 now. It's kind of invisible. Um, so let's make this a little bit cleaner. All that stuff cancels. We're left with x minus 1 over, over x. Final answer is D. Hey, so I was actually looking back at problem number six, and I figured out a, a much simpler way to do it than what I presented before. It actually involves four multiplication steps rather than six multiplication steps. So I was talking about factoring patterns, and Speaking of factoring patterns, previously I had showed the expansion of x minus 3 times x minus 3, or in other words, x minus 3 squared. What I noticed uh, when I looked back at this problem is x minus 3 times x plus 3 is also a very common factoring pattern. It's a difference of two squares. But let's go ahead and write that out. x minus 3 times x plus 3. If you notice the pattern in the factors, then you notice this is really another way of expressing x squared minus 9. The reason this is simpler is x squared minus 9 only has two terms rather than the trinomial expansion of this. So x squared minus 9 times x plus 3 then becomes the problem. You can use the box method to solve it. To avert any confusion, what I did was I re-expressed x minus 3 times x plus 3 as x squared minus 9, and we're multiplying that now by x minus 3, which actually means I wrote this wrong. The remaining factor here is x minus 3, so this is a negative 3 we'll have to multiply by. And again, the box method is just the distributive property. Uh, basically applied twice. We're distributing x over x squared minus 9, and we're distributing negative 3 over x squared minus 9. Multiplying x times x squared gives you x to the third power. Negative 9 times x, negative 9x. It's negative 3 times x squared. And negative 9 times negative 3 is positive 27. What's interesting about this approach now is we have no like terms in any of these boxes. So we can just expand the whole thing out. x to the third minus 3x squared minus 9x plus 27. So I mentioned that we, we simplified the multiplication from six steps down to four steps, but also we no longer have to combine any like terms. So this approach is actually much preferable to what I showed before.